welcome to this lesson in our series on the fertilizer industry. In this and the next lesson, we will talk about processes used to make the fertilizers commonly used in the agricultural industry. By now we have a fairly good idea of what fertilizers are generally used for. We will therefore strive to describe and explain the industrial processes used to produce these very important fertilizers. Amongst other processes, we will look at the fractional distillation of air, a nitrogen extraction, the Haber process for the production of ammonia, the Ostwald process and the contact process for the production of sulfuric acid. The processes involved in making fertilizers from nitrogen are quite complex, but it's important that you get an overview of the processes. Industrial chemists use flowcharts to illustrate these processes. Let's begin this lesson by examining a typical flowchart. Once we've examined the big picture, we'll have a closer look at each step. Keke, please talk us through the flowchart. In the first step of this flowchart, pure nitrogen is collected. Next, nitrogen gas is reacted with hydrogen gas to form ammonia. Ammonia is then used to make nitric acid. Notice how nitric acid and ammonia are used to make ammonium nitrate, a common fertilizer. Ammonia is also used to make other fertilizers in different processes. For example, when ammonia reacts with sulfuric acid, the fertilizer ammonium sulfate is produced. And when ammonia reacts with carbon dioxide, urea is formed. Urea is used as a fertilizer with a very high nitrogen content. A flowchart is a useful way of indicating how different processes link together. And I'm sure you'll find this a useful tool in learning about the processes involved. Let's begin by examining the first step in the process, the collection of nitrogen. You should remember that the atmosphere consists of a mixture of different gases, including nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and various other gases. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is a large source of nitrogen that chemists can use to make nitrogen-based fertilizers. The first step in the process is collecting nitrogen from the atmosphere and separating it from the mixture of other gases. Can you think of a process for separating a mixture of gases? Here's a hint. In a mixture, each gas has a unique boiling point. To start the process, chemists collect air from the atmosphere. This air is compressed until it becomes a liquid. The conditions of pressure and temperature are then changed. The gas with the lowest boiling point boils first, so it can be collected. At minus 188 degrees, only nitrogen boils. The gas is collected and allowed to condense to form pure nitrogen liquid. This process is called the fractional distillation of air. Now the second step in the flowchart is a process in which nitrogen is fixed to form ammonia. It's difficult to make nitrogen compounds for fertilizers because nitrogen is an unreactive gas. The breakthrough came from Germany just before the First World War. Fritz Haber, a German chemist, was one of the first chemists to design a process to make ammonia. He reacted nitrogen gas collected from the atmosphere with hydrogen gas collected from electrolysis of water in a closed container. The chemical equation for this process is N2 gas plus 3H2 gas to give 2 NH3 gas. Even though this looks possible theoretically, Fritz Haber was only able to convert less than 1% of the reactants into products. Can you suggest what the problem was? The first problem is that the rate of reaction is very slow at room temperature. And secondly, in a closed system, the gases reach a state of chemical equilibrium. And under the initial conditions, the reverse reaction is favored. Once Haber recognized the problem, he changed the conditions of pressure and temperature. He also introduced different catalysts. Another German chemist, Karl Bosch, contributed to Haber's work. He worked out the best conditions required for making ammonia. 
The reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia is exothermic. The enthalpy delta H is equal to negative 92,4 kilojoules per mole. Can you predict by applying Le Chatelier's principle what conditions of pressure and temperature will favor the increased production of ammonia? Remember, Le Chatelier's principle states that when a chemical equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, the system will work to relieve the cause of the disturbance until chemical equilibrium is re-established. Let's examine what will happen when we change the pressure of the gas mixture. Notice from the equation that there are four moles of reactants and two moles of products. We change the pressure on a gas by increasing or decreasing the volume of the container. When we increase the pressure of gases in chemical equilibrium, we create a stress on the system. To relieve this stress, the reaction that produces fewer moles of gas is favored. In this reaction, the forward reaction is favored and more ammonia is produced. The second factor that we can change in this reaction is temperature. This reaction is an exothermic reaction, so produces heat as a product. By reducing the heat, the forward reaction is favored and more ammonia is produced. So to sum this up, if we increase the pressure and reduce the temperature, we should produce more ammonia according to Le Chatelier's principle. But Haber and Bosch found that it was not so easy to find the ideal conditions for making ammonia. When they increased the pressure on the gas mixture, the temperature increased. Huh? And when they reduced the temperature, the rate of reaction decreased even more. The molecules of hydrogen and nitrogen did not have enough energy to have many effective collisions. To solve the problem, they tried using different catalysts. At first, Haber used osmium and uranium as catalysts, but they're very expensive. Fortunately, chemists have since established the most effective conditions for making ammonia. How do they do it, Keke? In modern ammonia plants, nitrogen and hydrogen flow into a chamber that is at a temperature of about 450 degrees Celsius and under pressure of about 200 atmospheres. The gas mixture passes over trays of iron catalysts. Only about 15% of the nitrogen and hydrogen gas is converted to ammonia. At the bottom of the chamber, the gas mixture is cooled in a condenser and the ammonia gas turns into a liquid. The liquid ammonia is then removed from the chamber and the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are pumped back to the top of the reaction chamber and passed over the catalyst again. Over a period of time, 98% of the nitrogen and hydrogen reacts to form ammonia. This process of converting nitrogen into ammonia is called the Haber-Bosch process or the Haber process. It occurs under special conditions of temperature and pressure and with the use of iron catalyst. So we learned that fractional distillation is used to extract nitrogen from the air. This nitrogen is then used to react with hydrogen gas to manufacture ammonia. This ammonia, as we shall see, is then used to produce most common fertilizers. We hope you see that there has to be a high yield of ammonia in order to meet such a huge demand of fertilizers in the agricultural industry. We will learn more about the Haber process and some of the other processes used to make fertilizers in the second part of this lesson. In the meantime, please try some of the questions in the task video. Visit mindset.co.za forward slash learn for more information. Goodbye.